Hey everyone, welcome back! Today's tutorial is perfect for prom or graduation or any event where you might have your photo taken. The best bit? It's totally affordable and I offer three different lip options depending on your outfit or your preferences. First step, prime the eyes. I actually don't have a drugstore primer on hand, boo, bad beauty blogger, but I do hear that the Wet n Wild Fergie Eye Primer is amazeballs. A lot of you asked about my eyeliner shape in my cream contouring video, so I'll demonstrate that today. To create an eyeliner stencil, place some tape at the outer corner of the eye, mirroring the angle of the lower lash line. You've seen this all before. The difference is I've shifted the tape downwards just a fraction so it's not sitting flush on the lash line. Now hold that thought while we do the eyeshadow. Whip out your favorite neutral shades. I've opted for single eyeshadows by Essence, which have a low level shimmer, but you can go matte if you prefer. Dust a bone shade on the brow bone and on the mobile lid to act as a bit of a preliminary highlight. If you have a deeper skin tone, pick a shade that is about two notches lighter than your complexion. I want a bit of warmth in the socket, so I've chosen a soft gold, which we will buff through the upper crease area to act as a transition shade. Slowly making our way to some deeper shades, I have a taupe or a taupe from Essence, and this one is more matte. I'm focusing this on the outer third of the eye and pushing my brush across the seam of the tape. I like my eye looks to be a little smokier, so I'm using a deep, cool brown shade to add some extra dimension to the outer V area. By focusing the depth on the outer corners of the eye, we can fake a more elongated, almond-shaped eye, and that is the kind of look that I'm going for today. Now for the fun bit. I'm taking a brown eyeliner pencil and performing Karima's Easiest Wing Liner. I will link that tutorial in the description box if you haven't yet seen it. You can substitute the pencil for a gel or a liquid eyeliner, but man, this is so easy and I love shortcuts. I position my pencil at the tape and draw a horizontal stroke to the lash line. The eyeliner shape today is heaviest at the outer corner and it tapers to nothing at the iris. This placement I find is really flattering for rounder eye shapes. Then take any angled brush and smooth out any wobbly bits. This pencil is by Models Prefer. It is a stunning color, but it sets almost immediately, so it's not ideal for this technique. Uh, then again, it wore all day, so I can't complain too much. Make sure you really fill in that gap between your lower lash line and the tape, so that when we peel off the tape, the eyeliner is perfectly fluid. Once you remove that tape, you might want to make some alterations. I felt as though the eyeliner stopped a little abruptly, so I feathered a little more pencil through the inner half of the lash line and I curled my lashes also. At this point, I was like, wow, what kind of prom makeup doesn't have at least a little bit of sparkle? And then Colourpop came to the rescue. This is uh, Game Face, which is a cooler sandy gold that I patted over the Merbar lid and the tear duct, just for a little sophisticated shimmer. Colourpop can't be found at the drugstore, but it is absolutely affordable at just five bucks a pop. I did a Colourpop review and swatch fest, actually. I will link that post in the description box below. Tight line the upper lash line with a black eyeliner for some extra intensity and onto the lashes. False lashes are so, so, so important to me when it comes to photography. They transform a look entirely. I'm using individuals mainly because they're more comfortable over long spans of time and you don't have to worry about your inner corner popping off while you're busting out on the DF, the dance floor. These lashes are knotted clusters by Ardell. I dropped three medium clusters on the outer lash line and three short clusters towards the iris. All the volume is on the outer half of the eye, which corresponds to the eyeliner shape. While the lash glue is drying, let's get our complexion in check. A little bit of pore filling primer over the nose is fab if you happen to be human, because humans have pores. I'm mixing the Revlon Colorstay Whip Foundation with the L'Oreal Lumi Magique Primer, partially to add some extra luminosity and partially to lift the foundation half a shade. The color range is really prohibitive, but this foundation is one of the few drugstore options that doesn't contain SPF, so it's flash friendly. 
I'm blending with a beauty blender and also running some of that product onto the neck. Have you ever seen those photos where the face looks really flawless and luminous, but the neck looks a bit speckled and dull? Blending some product downwards prevents that phenomena. <laughs> Take the clean side of a beauty blender to feather any product on the hairline because that can sometimes look a bit choppy. Apply your under eye concealer in whatever formation you please. I like to keep it minimal. I'm also dotting a bit of concealer on the corners of my mouth to deflect any shadows. You see these fingers? These are my what now fingers. Powder. I'm using a lighter shade of face powder to set the under eye concealer and the central portions of the face. If your skin is on the drier side, try using a damp beauty blender to press powder into the skin. It's really flattering on drier skin types. I'll then take a darker shade of face powder to set the outer perimeters of the face. I guess you could call this preliminary sculpting. It's like contouring on a much smaller scale. But I'm a contour too, you saw that coming. Same eyeshadow that we use on the eyes, the Taupe eyeshadow by Essence. It's actually a fabulous cool tone taupe for precise cheekbone contouring. I'm dusting the same shade under the jawline because sharp bone structure just makes me happy. Physicians Formula, in my opinion, is a totally underrated brand. Here we have a blush bronzer duo. Taking the bronze side on the outer cheekbone, the temples, the hairline, just a little warmth and dimension because the face can sometimes look a bit two dimensional in flash photography. Wipe off your brush to the beat of the music and dab in the blush portion of the compact. This is quite a vibrant coral that pairs really nicely with any warm look. I am irrationally ecstatic about this highlight. I have been trying to get my hands on this for yonks, like maybe even years. And every time I go to Priceline, it's sold out. It is as beautiful as I had imagined. I'm picking up some of the paler shades to run across the tops of the cheekbone, above the brow, tip of the nose and the cupid's bow. I hadn't forgotten about the brows by the way. We're using a Modelco brow kit today. I don't absolutely love this formula, but it is the ashiest brow product that I've encountered at the drugstore. I'm using a damp brush and just adding some oomph to the tail of my brow. I don't know if you guys have noticed this, but I'm taking a much more natural approach to my brows recently. I think I grew them out unintentionally, so I don't feel like they need that much work. Hairspray on a clean spoolie to set those hairs into place. Awesome beauty hack right there. Here is a little before and after. You know I love these. Natural but defined brows I think are a good option for prom or graduation because let me tell you, photos are forever. I quite like the top heavy eye look but if you want a more balanced eye, add some of your shimmer to the inner half of the lower lash line and one of your mid-tone eyeshadows to the outer half of the lash line. The lash glue is now dry so hit those lashes with mascara. If you are likely to cry, Go for a waterproof mascara. Personally, I didn't cry. I was like, bye. I also like mascara on the bottom lashes, but to avoid the spidery look, give them a good comb with a clean spoolie. For the hair, I went with loose curls, pretty standard. I have demonstrated my curling routine in quite a few prior videos. I'll link that in the description box. I purchased these earrings after seeing them on Tanya Burr. Aren't they fierce? They're rose gold by Maria Black. All the info will be down below also. I did promise three lip options. Our first lip option is a nude. Nothing too nude because we don't want our lips to vacate the building when flash arrives. Filling in the lips with a nude pencil and topping with a pink gloss. I liked this, but the combo struck me as a little bit too cool tone for the eye. So I rectified it by adding a peachy lipstick on top. Blot that situation down and voila, option nude. Option pink. I love this formula by Maybelline. The texture is very creamy, but it's a matte. It kind of reminds me of the NARS um, velvet matte lip pencils actually. You can achieve a decent amount of precision if the pencil is sharp, but perfectionists like me can fine tune with a lip brush. This would be a cool option if your dress or your outfit is really neutral and you're seeking a pop of color. Option red. This glossy number from Colourpop is breathtaking. 
applying straight from the bullet and perfecting the edges with a lip brush. The red lip paired with this eye is uber glamorous and it has this throwback vintage vibe. I actually think that it was my favorite of the three options. Let me know which was your favorite lip option in the comment section below. If you are going to prom or graduation, congratulations, have fun and bring a pair of flats. Anyway, I love you all. I hope that you are all having a wonderful day and I will speak to you all very soon. Bye bye.